This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2022 Flagstaff Microlite Travel Trailer. And the model number is 25 FKS. So this is not a floor plan or a sales video. It's a how-to video. So I'm just going to go over some of the features and show you how they work. Okay, so here we are at the door side rear. Of course, this is the water heater. Um, things to remember are this works on either gas or electric or both. The switches to operate it are inside the trailer. The electric heating element is that is behind this cover here, just so you know where it's at. And this is the gas valve. Never run the water heater without water in the tank. The tank is directly on the back of this. Always make sure that you have uh, water there before you turn it on or you'll burn the heating element element out really quickly okay now the thing to know also this is where you drain it from right here it's a drain plug plus an anode rod which is on the back of it a sacrificial rod um, so this takes an inch and a sixteenth six point socket plus you'll need a six inch extension and a, a ratchet or a bar to break it with but that's where you're going to drain it at okay this is uh, just a sprayer port you get a, a coiled sprayer with it and that's you use that to hose things down or whatever you need to do. There's your sprayer right there. Okay. Now this this cooktop pulls out. Okay. And I just want to show you that it says down here LP disconnect. And if you look right there, hopefully you can see it. There's the there it is right there. So you're going to use this hose, uh, this LP hose, and you connect it to the quick connect down there to get gas to this appliance. Now. There's also a griddle inside. I'll show you that when, when it's, it's sitting in there. It's actually not stowed in there. It's just there because we're prepping. But it hangs right on this railing here, right? So you get that plus a, a utility table that goes next to it. And you, you also get this other quick connect hose here. You can see it right there. That's going to connect onto the grill. And then the other section will connect right onto this quick connect right here too. So that's a second quick connect for the LP system. You gotta plug the griddle and the cooktop in before you can use them, obviously. This refrigerator works on AC power, it's just like a dorm refrigerator. Um, you have a power awning with LED strip, outside speakers. Um, this is a TV signal out plus power plus a TV bracket. The other half should be inside the trailer. In case you want to hang a TV out there, that's where you would do it. Okay, you can adjust these steps. Each leg is adjustable, so you can adjust to the terrain. Uh, like I was, on each corner, there's a, a scissor jack, a stabilizer that takes a, um, a, a three-quarter inch, six-point, three-quarter inch crank, and uh, you can also use a six-inch, uh, excuse me, <laughs> a three-quarter inch, six-point socket on a drill if you want. Just don't overextend them or over retract them. You don't want to break them. You don't lift the trailer with them. You just kind of take the wiggle out of it okay this is just a vent here this is your hitch here we'll show you how this operates when you pick up it's a husky center line weight distribution hitch with built-in sway control so it's a good one we'll show you how that works okay here batteries here um, 230 pound LP tanks they're both full um, oh, is that there? This is your power tongue jack here, so it goes up and down, and you have a hitch light on it. Now you also get a small crank with this. You, if this happens to fail and you can't hitch or unhitched, you can always put the crank on here and crank it manually if you need to. So that's a good feature. Um, let me move back over this way for one second. Let's see if I walk past something here. There's also a means where you can crank the slide room out. Let me see if I can show you. Let's see if I can see it on my monitor here. Hold on, please. Um, there's a pin with a, or a shaft with a pin through it right there. You can see it looking straight through that hole, too. Well, you can actually crank that slide room manually. If it happened to fail for any reason, you can crank it in and out manually right there. If you do, it's going to take a million cranks, but it will, it will go in and out. Okay? That's another good feature. Okay, so the batteries have a kill switch, if you ever want to use it. It's right 
button there, if you can see that, right below that the LP tanks there. That's a kill switch. Generally, you know, if you go into storage, you could shut them off in the dead of winter, but generally you're going to keep them with the batteries on because when you're towing down the road, obviously your, your tow vehicle's alternator is going to be charging the batteries. When you're plugged in, the power converter is going to be changed, charging the batteries. And your, let's make sure we got here, this does have a solar panel, doesn't it? Let me see. Yes, so um, when you're just sitting in the sun, your solar panel is going to be charging the battery also. Okay, these are just docking lights. This is an outside shower. Okay, two dual axles, which makes it pull really nice. You've got a um, 30 foot, 30 amp power cord, shore cord. Okay, um, let me let me go through all the the water hookups here. This is your city water hookup right here. So if you got city plumbing at the at the campsite, you just hook the hose on there, turn it on, everything works like it should. Now if you don't have plumbing on the campsites, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank right here. And then turn on the pump and you can pump the water uh, from the tank. Everything will work as though you have city water, you'll just be pumping it from a fresh water tank. So you, either or, you're in good shape. Now this right here is a black tank flush. After you dump the black tank valves, or the, val the black tank I should say, by pulling the valves which are over here. So you got your gray and you got your black. Black is toilet water and waste, gray is sink and shower water. After you dump your black you can leave the valve open, hook the hose at the dump station on here, and then you can turn it on and it will spray the inside of your black tank out, clean off the sensors, that sort of thing. So just make sure you leave the valve open before you do that. You have a pre-wire for a, a backup camera if you ever want to add one. Um, just make sure you get the right one, the, the Furion that fits in that housing right there. Um, you have a ladder which makes it easy to inspect the roof. The manufacturer states you should inspect your roof every 90 days. So you can walk on the roof no problem, you just have to be very careful. But you look at all the, the uh, sealant, make sure there's no cracking or separation anywhere where water can get in. Look at your skylight. Look at all the roof attachments and roofing material. Make sure it wasn't damaged by a low branch or a road debris flying up there. You just, just protect your investment by staying ahead of everything, okay? It's important to do that with all trailers. This is just um, a pull-out uh, tub here, or what do I call it, a tote. So you just pull that out and you can store stuff in it. Okay. Also, this, this, this port here is used to draw antifreeze into the trailer. It's something you'll have to research a bit if you're going to do your own winterization. But you basically put a hose on here, make it, make it, it's a garden hose fitting, make it long enough to reach the ground, and you would put it into a gallon of antifreeze and, and use the water pump to pump it into the system. Okay? All right, so let's go inside. Okay, so as soon as we come in the door, First of all, this is a GFCI plug here. All the plugs in the trailer, even the one on the outside, are wired through this GFCI. So keep that in mind. If you have to, if it pops, you're, you're outside and it pops, you're still going to reset it in here. Okay, this is your control panel. Let me uh, get in a better position here. Okay. So, um, here's your slide room in and out right here. Your power awning is in and out right here. Uh, extend and retract. Make sure you always, uh, you always leave the, the awning in when you're not around the campsite. You know, you don't want it to get damaged by the weather. So when you're, not attend, when you're not at the campsite, make sure you roll it in. To turn your water pump on, it's right there. To light your water heater on gas, right there. To, light, to turn on the electric heating element, right there. Remember what I said, about always making sure there's water in the tank before you do that. Uh, to turn on your tank heaters, right here. The, each tank has a, a heating pad on it and the uh, valve and elbow have a heating pad also so uh, you can extend your camping season without worrying about your your holding tanks uh, freezing okay to check your levels your battery is charged fresh water is empty black is empty gray one gray two the second gray tank is up here it's a galley tank it's called but that's gray, gray tank two is often called a galley tank okay um, Okay, so this also has another device here. It says Wi-Fi here. This is the Wi-Fi Ranger. So what the Wi-Fi Ranger is, is a, um, 
it's a public Wi-Fi uh, signal booster, basically. It's up on the roof, or the antenna is anyway. So what you do is, if you look at this sticker here, first of all, you can follow this code and learn lots about it that way also, but just to, make, just to go over it briefly, where it says network, and then it says the name Tenton uh, 6138, that's you, that's your Wi-Fi Ranger. So with all your, you and all your family's devices, um, you go to the Wi-Fi section and you'll put in a password for Tenton 6138 so it'll always log on to it automatically if it needs to, okay? Then, in a browser, you type in this address at the bottom here, right? It'll take you to the page for the, for the, the uh, Wi-Fi extender, or, or, which is, like I said, it's, an, it's like a combination of antenna with a uh, router mixed in, I guess you could look at it that way. So you'll see everything that you'll you use this temporary password, the one right in the middle, change me now, 6138. Of course, you'll make up your own password for that. But when you do that, you'll see everything that the Wi-Fi Ranger sees. So let's say they gave you a passcode for, uh, you know, so-and-so's RV park. Uh, you would just find that, go down the list, find it. Then you would click on it and, and type in their password, and you're hooked to the uh, public Wi-Fi. What it does is it boosts the signal really well. Plus, it's got a built-in firewall and that sort of thing, so you're just a safer and, and better public Wi-Fi experience by using this, okay? Now, the, uh, you can learn as much as you want about it by going to their website, of course. Also, uh, this has a second function, which has to do with cellular service. I'm not going to get into that with you, but if you can pursue it if you want to. Um, it's mainly for people who, you know, who work or do business from their trailer. But you can, you can get a, a SIM card and you would pay a monthly fee and you would have cellular service with this also. Um, if you wanted to, you could look into that and find out more about it. Um, it's also telling you that your app, or your, your app, your, uh, your, your awning, slide outs, lights and everything have an app. So you can, you can go to this right here and put it on your phone. Okay, I think that covers that. Okay. So, let me look up here just one second real quick. Okay, yeah, let me go. There's a range hood right here. It has a fan on it and a light. I just want to show you this so I don't forget. This is the vent for the, for the range hood right here. So, if you can see, there's, there's a latch here and a latch here. You always want to push up on those latches so the baffle in there flaps freely when you're venting. So if you're venting to the outside, you want that baffle to flap freely so it actually vents to the outside. If you're traveling or in storage, you can just snap it shut. But anytime you want to run the range hood vent to, to clear the uh, kitchen air out, you've got to open that baffle so it flaps freely. That's important. Also keep in mind that this door is a little bit bigger. This will not hurt anything, by the way, but just so you know, you're always going to have to keep your door o or a little bit away from that. You don't have to have it at a 98 degree angle, but you have to have it a little bit so you don't hit the door with the awning when you're putting it out. Okay, that's pretty typical. Um, let me go back inside here. So, microwave works like any other microwave. Range hood vent with a fan and a light. This is your uh, range here. Okay, so uh, I just turned the gas on. It'll take a minute for it to get up here, I think, but we'll see. This is your sparker. You turn this clockwise to spark it. You've got three knobs and three burners, and then this is the oven here. Let me see if it lights. Yeah, it does right off the bed. Okay, so it's that simple. You just turn it on, spark it, and it lights. Now, with the oven, it's a little bit different. First of all, you've got lights. You've got this light, and then you've got an oven light. Okay, now if you look all the way to the back there, there's a pilot light. I'm going to spark it so you can see it. You can see it sparking back there. Okay, so what you do to light the oven, you go to the picture of the flame, which means pilot, and you depress it. You keep it depressed while you're lighting it. So you hold it in, then you start sparking with the other hand until it lights down here. After it lights, you still hold this in for another 10 seconds or so to heat up the thermocouple. Then you go to operating temperature, and it cycles as an oven does, right? But when you shut it off, the flame goes out, but so does the pilot light, so you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the, uh, the oven, okay? Always travel with this shut, this top shut. It won't break if it's closed, but sometimes they break when you leave them open and they flap around. This is your griddle. 
I told you about. This is the table I told you, the utility table. And this is the rack that the griddle sits on. Normally this will not be in the kitchen here. Um, our guy who prepped it just put it there temporarily. Um, these are your keys here. Okay. This is a tire monitor. So um, basically um, each, each wheel, not the spare, the four wheels, the two left and two right side wheels, have a sensor on them. So the, the sensor is actually stuck to the inside of the wheel or, or, or inside the tire on the wheel, I guess you would say, and it's directly across from your uh, valve stem. Uh, just so you know that's there. So that's where the, the sensor is for this. Now, um, basically you're going to set this up and go through the procedure to, um, to set it up so you can get the temperature of your hubs and you can get your tire pressure. You take this up in your tow vehicle's cab with you and you can keep an eye on it. It has an audible alarm if you want it. It's up to you to turn it on or off, whatever you want to do. But it will tell you what's happening if one's overheating or if it's uh, um, you're starting to get a, a lose air or something like that. Um, keep in mind that you're going to have a little fluctuations in your in your temperature of your hubs. They're not always going to be exactly the same. Some people tend to overreact, but um, keep that in mind. Now, if you wanted to add, let's say you wanted to add it to your tow vehicle, you can actually buy caps that screw on where the where the dust cover cap screws on your valve stem. It won't tell you temperature, but it'll tell you tire pressure, and you can program that in here too. Um, and uh, it'll let you know what's happening, okay? See here on the picture showing the temperature plus the PSI. And you can look at each, these represent the tires, you can look at each tire individually, okay? All right. There's great videos, the company has great videos, plus there's literature in your packet on that. Okay, let me go a little farther here, see where we're at. This. Now, this is a power inverter. This inverts and converts power. So, an inverter is uh, inverting 12 volt DC to 120 AC, right? So, um, let's say you want to run an AC appliance, but you're not plugged into AC power, right? So, you look at here, all your plugs aren't going to be inverted, but this one says in. Uh, inverter circuit so this one here for example is hooked up to the inverter so if you wanted to plug an AC appliance in here and run it off a battery you would turn this on like that you can't hear it probably but you hear it rev up right there if I could hear it I mean so what it's doing now is taking 12 volts from your battery it's sent to the inverter the inverter inverts the 12 volt DC into 120 AC and then sends it to your outlets right you can't, you can't invert forever because it, the battery will eventually wear down, so that you're limited. But keep in mind that, like I said, when you're pulling down the road, your tow vehicle's alternator's charging your, um, your battery. When you're plugged in, your power converter, I'll show you that in a minute, which is right here, that is charging your battery. And also your solar panel is doing it, so keep that in mind. Don't leave it inverting all the time, just do it when you need to invert. And to shut it off, you've got to hold it a, a minute before you take your finger off. There you go. Okay. Now, I, I'm going to skip all over some of the other stuff right now. I'll go to this just so we can keep up with it while we're on the subject. This is the converter here. So this is just the opposite. It goes from AC to DC power. So you start off with 110 AC, or 120 AC if you prefer, um, from your shore power, from your campground power. And that comes in here to these circuit breakers. This is a distribution center like you'd have at home. Plus these are your circuit breakers, same ones you probably have at home. And uh, they're all labeled here, right? That's AC power. Then it's con the power is converted to 12 volt DC on this side. So you got 12 volt DC fuses here, um, and they're all labeled, right? So um, that's your DC side. This is also a battery tender. Like I mentioned earlier, it'll sense how much energy your, ba energy your batteries need, have or need, and it'll act accordingly. If they're charged, it'll just trickle a couple amps. If um, if they're low, it'll send 10, 10 amps or whatever it needs to keep them charged. Um, so it does that also. Keep in mind these two are 40s. Those are the the main fuses and they're, they're, they're duplicates you know it's just it's all for the protection of the 12 volt side so if you ever have a wild power surge or a lightning strike or something and your 12 volt side goes out it doesn't happen too often but it can happen on a rare occasion always look at these 40s first that's where the problem is almost always going to be you just pull them out look at them to see if they're blown or not so carry a few 40s with you 
and a few uh, 15s with you just to have them around, okay? So this converts AC to DC plus it charges your battery. That's the converter. The other one was the inverter. Now let me go a little farther here. All right, so while we're on the subject anyway, get some more light here. I don't remember. Oh, there it is right there. Okay. All right, so this is your solar controller here. So it's kind of hard to see, but we'll go through it. So right now it's not set yet. It's, this is for a gel battery. So the first thing we're going to do, because this has wet batteries, is we'll hold this a minute. See, it's flashing now. So we're going to move it up to flooded, right, which is what you have. You don't have to do this once I set it. There you have it. So now it's making the right calculations. It understands that there's flooded batteries on this one. So, Okay, so you don't have to worry about A anymore, just B. Um, so you're 100% charged. Um, you got uh, one, 123 amp hours. You're gaining, uh, let me say this, your, your battery has 13.7 volts in it, which is charged. It's perfect. Now, right now, we're gaining, you can see the picture of the sun and the arrow going through the solar panel. We're gaining 2.6 amps. That's what's being sent to your battery right now from the solar panel. Now, if, though, if your batteries are charged, um, it will, it'll flash FUL, and when you go to this screen, it'll say 0.0. .0. That's just telling you that you're totally charged and it can't accept any more electricity in the battery. So that doesn't, it sh shuts down the solar panel, so to speak. So, um, we're right now we're, we're gaining 2.5 from the sun. You'll see it go up to 6.0. Depends on the angle of the sun, the time of day, of course. It depends on uh, the, how cloudy it is, that, all that sort of thing, okay? Um, you, I'm sure you know all this, but I'm just, I have to act like, like you don't just, cause, just in case, I guess. Is. So, you, like I said, you got 100% charge, um, amp hours, 13.7 volts from your batteries, which is perfect, and you're gaining 2.6 amps from the solar panel okay you also can there are more features you can look into it more you for example if if you lock if you are an emergency and you got a cell phone that's dead you can plug it in right here on the solar panel will charge the phone things like that so you can look into it more this also has a app here so you can you can research it the thing about all these these um, attachments and these components is you you get a, a packet that has information right but you also can go to the manufacturer's websites, type in the, type in the model number, and, and look at their, their videos, which can help. It's a good way to learn also. So um, keep that in mind. You can always do that. All right. So to go over to get the power inverter, the power converter, and the solar panel controller right there. Okay? All right. So this refrigerator is a 12-volt DC refrigerator. It's got a compressor, a 12-volt compressor, okay? Always keep this shut when you're traveling so it doesn't swing open and dent the refrigerator, of course. Um, your TV obviously works like any other TV. You have remotes for all these things, too. I just don't, I haven't seen where he put all this stuff yet. But it's here. So I'll just talk of it without the remote anyway. Your fireplace is a space heater, and it works on 120 AC, so it works on shore power. Um, so to turn it on, we just do that. So you can see you got a nice looking uh, flame. You can do this, change it a bit, change the color. You can do this, and you, I don't know if you can see that here. Let me get a better view here. 77 degrees. So you can set the temperature there. It's also a space heater, so it blows hot air out. The good thing about this is it runs on AC power. You know, you've got a limited supply of LP gas, so on those days where you don't, or nights, that you don't quite need to run the furnace, you've got people over, whatever, you're sitting around, you can run this, and it'll take the chill right out of it, and you won't use any of your LP gas. So that's a good function. The next is the, is the radio, or sound. Um, you can play CDs and DVDs right here. It has Bluetooth, so you can stream wirelessly from your, your phone or tablet, whatever you have. You can run a stream off a USB. You've got an HDMI that's an in. So if you need to go into the system for some reason, any other device you want to go into the system, you can do it there. You have AM, FM radio, and everything that goes along with that, you know, presets and all that. And then, of course, you have three speaker zones, right? One, two, and three. Now, three is outside, right? 
So you have a separate, um, you can push Z3, which means zone 3, and you can set the, the source in the volume separately from the rest of the trailer. So you could run a, you could be watching a video in here, and then that's fine, you push zone 3, and then set a, a FM station, let's say, and the level of sound, and it will play the radio outside, and you can still watch a video in here. So it, you can you can you have two sources with this, and you select the outside by Z3. Okay. All right. So let me look around here, see where I'm at. Of course, you got theater seats with all this stuff, plus the rest folds up. Kind of nice. You also have a swing out bracket here, by the way. Keep that in mind. You always want to latch. There's there's a latch on this one, I'm sure. Let me look before I say that. Yeah, you can see how this piece this clamps clips into this this piece right here. This this cylinder goes into this this clip here. So make sure you clip them together when you're traveling, so it doesn't fly around and you know dent something. Okay. One other thing to know about this, while I'm, while I'm looking at it, is see this green LED here. That's this device here is the digital signal booster for your digital antenna. Um, you can shut it off if you want by doing that, but you won't get a good signal. It'll lock up and it'll be all, all kinds of digital noise, that sort of thing. But you turn it on when you're using the antenna and you'll get a super good picture from it. So keep in mind that if you're having get lousy reception, check to make sure this is on, okay? All right. Now let me look around. I only got 26 minutes to complete this before it sets a new file, so I think I got to pick things up here. Okay, so the bathroom works like any other bathroom. You have a, a toilet. You always have to put chemical and water in the toilet before you use it. So when you get to the campground, you hook up your power and your water. You come inside, you dump a dose of chemical in the bowl. You step on the pedal. Water will come swirling out because we're hooked up to water. And you put about a gallon or so in the tank below, the black tank's directly below. So you put the chemical and let the, let the water wash the chemical in, into the bowl and uh, you're all set. Some people use more than a gallon, it's up to you, but the thing is you have to use water and chemical in there before you start using it when the black tank's dry, otherwise the smell will be terrible uh, with a capital T and um, it also can, be, can get clogged up, so keep in mind you have to do that. Uh, you have a fan here for speed. Always run it with the shower to pull the humidity out. These are built super tight, these trailers. So let's just say you got a bunch of people over here. You're sitting around, and it's the time of year where you start to get the condensation from your breath. Well, if you turn this fan on, to set it on low or, or speed two, and uh, it'll suck all the humidity out, all, all the condensation out. So you won't have to worry about that. So keep that in mind, too. It solves that problem with, with trailers. So the thing that makes this different is the shower miser right here. The shower miser is a water circulating system. So while the water's heating up, normally it would just go down the drain and you'd stick your hand in there and you check the temperature till it got hot, right? So when you're doing that, you're wasting water, and, and a lot of states have drought conditions, for example, and you're not allowed to waste water. Um, or you're, to another way to look at it is you're sending your, your water down the drain and, and wasting space in your gray tank, so, right? So you used up your storage space too. The way to get around that is with, with this shower miser. It loops from here back around the water heater and through the pump and back around and around again. So therefore you're just running the same water in a loop. And what happens is this will start to change color and when it turns into kind of a beige's color, that means you've reached temperature. Then you can just go like you normally would to shower and it'll come out nice and hot and you didn't waste any water while you're, while you're heating up the water. Again, you can go to websites and look at look at stuff to learn more about it. But that's the shower miser, and it's a it's a, a well, another green feature. All right, so let me keep moving here. You get an extra table here, um, a vent here, which is great. Um, TV hookups here. You can see them right there, and uh, of course your bed lifts up, and you can uh, there's some storage underneath. All right, okay, I think that does it then. Okay, I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. And keep in mind what I said earlier, you need to inspect your roof every 90 days to, to stay on top of things. Odds are you won't have to do anything for a long, long time, but you don't know that for sure. So that's why you look. And right now, this is summarized. Although antifreeze has been purged from the system, replaced with water, so it's ready to be camped in right now. Okay, thank you.